Hello from Emerald Hill Skies. My name is Doug and we're perched here on the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky. And we'd like to welcome you to this live stream tonight, another one of our series in our hunt to work our way through the Herschel 400 list. Now the Herschel 400 list uh, was made famous by this book, which uh, was written by Stephen James O'Meara. And uh, Steve O'Meara in this book tells the story of the origin of the Herschel 400 list. Apparently, uh, Sir William Herschel discovered 231 galaxies, 107 open star clusters, 33 globular star clusters, 20 nebulae, and two halves of a single, single planetary nebula, along with seven bright nebulae. Now, they actually discovered hundreds of other objects. But the Ancient City Astronomy Club, ACAC, in St. Augustine, Florida, created this list of curated objects that they thought were pretty cool from what Sir William Herschel had, had discovered. And they made this list more to be a follow-up after a person had done the Messier list, which Sir Charles Messier uh, assembled as he was hunting for comets, and he would catalog the things that were not comets. And uh, this ancient city astronomy club down in St. Augustine, Florida, they observed, they, they noticed that a lot of observers kind of did the Messier list and then didn't know what, what to do afterward. So they put together this list to be like a next level of challenge. It's kind of like uh, an advanced level, you could say, because the objects are smaller and fainter and more difficult to find visually. So here we are trying to work our way through. This is our fifth uh, in the series of working our way through the 400 objects. And we'd love to welcome you tonight to this. Thank you for being a part. I'm just going to check our, our um, audio here, if I may. Let's see if I can get this, um, get this test. Here we go. Okay, so it looks like our audio is working. In fact, we already already got some folks on. There's Azray, welcome, and Dane. Uh, <laughs> welcome back, Dane. We've got also one lateral loss one uh, there tonight. Uh, be sure and remind us where you guys are from. I will say this: last time we gathered, a bunch of people got together and wanted to say thank you. And my goodness. I was just so humbled by that. They got together, and by the time the live stream was done, they had done these things called um, super chat thank yous or super chat stickers. And they had like pitched in $5 per sticker, $5 per sticker. Some people did $20. Uh, some people did $100. One guy did $400. <laughs> Oh my goodness, by the time we were done, people had pitched in $574, and I committed to you that whatever we received would go straight to help uh, Ukrainians that were fleeing and trying to survive within Ukraine, the, the horrible conflict that's going on there. Now, YouTube hasn't sent us that money yet, but they've told us that they received uh, $574, and they'll take a little cut of that, so we'll get some smaller portion of that. But uh, we will send that over. I'll just say up front here tonight, if anybody gives anything else, we'll do the same thing. We'll put it together with that last $574. Don't feel like you have to. I'm just telling you in advance, I am not doing this for your money. Uh, but if you do decide to do that, we'll send it uh, over to Ukraine. In a way, it means a lot also if you just click that bell uh, that says you want to be notified click the thumbs up that says if you like content like this and only if you like it. And then if you haven't already subscribed, click the subscribe and that way uh, you'll be notified, like I say, when we do content like this. So the first object we're going to look at, let's get started, is NGC 5634. It's a globular cluster in the constellation Virgo. Let's go over here because we've actually been um, stacking this now for about uh, six minutes. And uh, what we'll do is we'll switch over to our screen so you can look with me and you're going to see exactly what I'm seeing here. We're going to put our black level bar right on that crest and then pull these mids in a little bit and that'll let us start seeing this globular cluster. And notice the tighter we get, 
the brighter that globule of cluster will get. And we're right now at about 100% of our camera's ability optically. But what we can do is we can zoom in a little bit more, which you might call um, digital zoom. It's not like improving the optical clarity, but it does perhaps let you see the structure of this globular cluster. Now, what is a globular cluster? It's basically a group of stars that are traveling together. And uh, uh, Stephen James O'Meara writes about NGC 5634 in his book, uh, The Herschel 400 Observing Guide. He writes that it's a moderately small and condensed globular cluster of near sixth magnitude in the constellation uh, 104, well, it's near sixth magnitude 104 Virginis. So it's in the constellation Virgo, and it's very close to an 8.5 magnitude star. It makes it relatively easy to find. Uh, it's roughly four minutes wide isosceles triangle. I guess I wouldn't have thought of that as being a triangle, but now that you mention it, it is kind of, a, in a way, triangular, isn't it? Um, and you can see these bright stars here, uh, alpha and a tenth magnitude of the southwest. These are these two bright stars you're seeing. It's best to boost the power to at least 101 power when the cluster stands out clearly from the star alpha. It's very condensed but unresolvable. Now, in our 11-inch Rasa, you can start to resolve quite a few of those stars in the core, can't you? It does gradually brighten towards the center. It looks more like a small comet than a globular cluster. I'm just happy to say that in our 11-inch Rasa view tonight, we are able to see uh, some of those stars in the core resolved. So a globular cluster, cluster is a, a group of stars traveling together, and they tend to be older stars. So uh, as a result, they're like, uh, you know, 10 billion years old or whatever, and they're, they're just grouped together in a very tight glob, and thus the name globular cluster. So it's kind of wild to think that that's up there all the time. Let me look down here and see what folks are saying in the live stream. There's uh, Jen. Welcome back, Jen. Good to see you. One lateral loss there in Chattanooga. Good to have you here. There's Mandy S. Hello, Mandy. And Rock Price. Hey, Doug from Missouri. Love the EAA, Electronically Assisted Astronomy. Uh, out of my observatory as I write this, imaging M51. That's that Whirlpool galaxy. So wish we could see that image. Keep up the great work. Rock, we're so glad you're with us. Papa Tech, hello, Doug. Glad to see you're back at it. Clouds here until 2 a.m., so maybe I will wake up then. <laughs> Papa Tech's down in Florida, and oftentimes he'll have clouds, and we have clarity, and then uh, he'll have clarity when we have clouds. So uh, we're really glad to welcome all of you. Thanks for being a part of this tonight. I think we're going to save this um, uh, scene, and uh, let me just back out and show you what this looks like at full frame. So that is a full frame view and you can barely make out that globular cluster and maybe see how small it is. How small is it? Well, um, it's just 5.5 arc minutes wide. Remember we've told you before the sky can be divided up into 180 degrees. Anything that you can see from horizon to horizon, 180 degrees. Each degree of that 180th arc degrees, each degree would be divided up into 60 arc minutes. And this object is only five and a half arc minutes wide. So it's very tiny. Looks there in the middle of our 11 inch Rasa frame, like a, indeed, like a comet, like Steve O'Meara said. Okay, so we're going to add a quick log entry here. We're going to associate this with observing list H400 all. And we're going to also associate it with this observing session, which is the Herschel 400 list part 5. And we'll say here that uh, NGC uh, 5634 was indeed resolvable in our 11-inch Rasa field of view looking bright to the core. All right, that's our first observation ever of NGC 5634. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll go over to LiveSky and we'll search for 
5634 and we'll remove it from our working list and that'll uh, that'll help us realize we don't have to look at this again and then we'll also go over here to the side 5634 and we'll add it to the observing list of the things that have been observed that's kind of our workflow and this completes then um, this record of we'll say next target and uh, let's figure out what we're going to so go see next so 5634 let's go see NGC 5746 how about that NGC 5746 so these are now in alphabetical order 5746 here it is and let's uh, slew to that and we'll let you see the telescope it's an 11 inch Rasa didn't have to move very much did it just moved a little bit and that live view boy I think we can tune that up a little bit that's looking a little bit bright let's go down to two seconds you know what that is that's the moon in the middle of that field of view that is the moon tonight at about what 90 percent moon I don't know what we are 80 percent moon something like that it's very bright we'll darken that maybe one more one more notch oh that's too much isn't it all you see is the moon there now so we'll make it 1.5 seconds there you go so there's our live view of the scope it is a Rasa 11 inch and uh, there's our live view of the sky through our ASI 178 mono camera and let's come back to the screen now and uh, let's uh, see we're looking at um, NGC 5746 so we're going to center on that 5746 not very far away and then we'll open up an info info panel on that as well and you can see this is still in Virgo and let's go over here and let's do a, a plate solve remember what plate solve is that's where we ask SharpCap which is our imaging software to look through the telescope and look at what it's seeing and then match it with its database of what it should be seeing and then bring the two together so it's going to move the scope so that it uh, settles on the exact angle in the nighttime sky and it's only off about 0 0.06 degrees almost nothing uh, so now that we know that this object should be in the middle I kind of see this little faint object there let's change this name up here to NGC 5746 and let's change to our imaging run and then let's go down to our title and change our title to NGC 5746 and what this is is a spiral galaxy a spiral galaxy in Virgo spiral galaxy in the constellation Virgo so there's our title put you guys back on the screen we'll just get rid of that little um, sequence and we'll do a quick little color balance and that'll bring our crests together put our black level bar right on top of that crest and then bring our mids in man oh I think I kind of see that galaxy beginning to show up it's edge on it's edge on so let's let that live stack for a minute and while it's live stacking we'll read a little bit about it I'm going to put a check mark in our book beside the one that we just saw, 5634. And uh, this is 5746, NGC 5746. It says it's a beautiful edge on system near fourth magnitude 109 Virginis. So that would be this star right here. So that's um, fourth magnitude. That's pretty, pretty bright. 
It's one of the most neglected galaxies in Virgo, and it's a real visual gem that's easy to find. A dark sky is necessary, which we don't have tonight. The moon is so bright, but with uh, electronically assisted astronomy, we can kind of get around that some because we're stacking frames, getting rid of all the, the um, noisy frames. And by noise, we mean all this moonlight noise, you see. Uh, it says that it all but fades from view if you look directly at it through an eyepiece. So what you have to do is use what's called averted vision if you're looking through an eyepiece. And that's where you pretend to be looking somewhere else in the frame. Then you concentrate on your peripheral vision. It's very tricky to do this. But with electronically assisted astronomy, looking at this galaxy through our camera's view, we don't have to do that. We can look directly at it. The reason you do that averted vision is because there are some nerves that enter into your eye, in the back of your eye, at the place where the photons are landing. And it unfortunately means your eye is not as sensitive at the back of your eye, right where you would look at an eyepiece. It's kind of a bummer, isn't it? Um, swells into view as a fine sliver of light, six minutes in length, very small, oriented north, northwest to south, southeast. North, northwest to south, southeast. It's more apparent than NGC 891, appearing like a sharp needle with a bright bead at its core. Uh, 70 power of the galaxy nucleus, very apparent. A star and a thin wafer of light. The disk is not uniform, especially the south, where there's a definite star or enhancement. With time, I could also make out a waviness to the galaxy's bulge on the western side. So that's very interesting. This is NGC 5746. NGC 5746. Now you can see it started to come into view. We're going to do another color balance here. And then we're going to bring our blacks over onto the peak. And that establishes a new black a new black uh, threshold, you might say. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can see. Yeah, look at that galaxy. Now you can start to make it out. It's edge on, meaning that it's as if we're viewing the galaxy from the edge. Let me just see uh, what folks are saying here in the live stream. As Ray, how's the focus? I think the focus is pretty good. We focused right before the um, right before the live stream tonight. So we used Nina to autofocus. Moon's about 90%, as Ray says. Thanks, as Ray. Flat water, really. Um, flat water. I must have missed some things. Uh, Aurora flat. Oh, flat water five is with us. And he's seeing Aurora Borealis shining down in Dallas. Can you picture that? And Papa Tech said, really? And boy, that is hard to believe, isn't it, with the moon at 90%. Simon says, hello from Perth. Uh, welcome back, Simon. You're amazing the way you check into these. So it's the middle of your day. It's like 11 a.m. Um, Flatwater 5. Papa Tech, you don't like Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Simon, hey Doug, for next time you start up, there's a new version of Command Route, version 8, that came out a few weeks ago. I cannot wait to get that. Thank you, Simon. I'm definitely going to upgrade. Dane says, Azrae Astrophotar gets better resolution the longer you look at it. Don, hi Doug, nice target. Like the video all. Uh, Azrae, thanks Dane. Flatwater 5, no, these are lyrics from a Muppets song. Uh, Simon says, yes. 12 hours in front of us. Wow. That's amazing that you'll take time to log on here in the middle of your morning. Okay, so here we are. Um, our color balance is still okay. Let's move this black bar just a little bit to the... Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should leave it there so that we can make out a bit more of this galaxy. I'm going to hold the shift key down. That lets us fine-tune that, that bar. We're going to try to cheat over till we just barely can increase the contrast between the black sky and this object. Man, it's tricky, isn't it? 
You can see what Stephen James O'Meara said. The core just looks a little bit oblong with a star in the middle of it. You can barely make out the edge of the galaxy. Kind of tricky to get this to show up in all the moonlight, isn't it? Looks kind of like a lost in space flying saucer, doesn't it? There is another object down here. Can you see that? Let's go over and see what this is over here to the left. That looks like maybe an elliptical galaxy, doesn't it? Sometimes I have the hardest time getting back to our planetarium software. There we go. GC5746. That looks like that's NGC5740. It's a spiral galaxy. All right, we're going to do an observation here. This reminded us of a lost in space flying saucer. Uh, very dim in the moonlight tonight. NGC 5746. This is the first time we've ever observed this galaxy, but it is beautiful, isn't it? Papa Tech says, no focus issues here. Azray, thanks. It's probably due to my small tablet screen. Kimberly, welcome, Kimberly. Good to have you on from Florida. Now, we did do uh, new darks and new flats, but uh, here's already a wondering um, hot pixel here. That shouldn't be there, huh? We are cooling our camera. You can see it's at uh, minus 8 degrees below 0 Celsius. So we are cooling it, but there's a hot pixel no matter what. Uh, good visual pair, Don says. He's talking about 5746 with this um, other galaxy, which was, what is it again? 5740. All right, let's save this at six minutes and a half. Actually, we're, we're doing pretty well at it. There's a picture of 5746. First time ever for us to observe this. Dane says, what is a hot pixel? I'm sure I can Google it, but I'm afraid of the results. <laughs> you're afraid you're going to get some kind of, who knows what you get on that. Well, a hot pixel is a pixel in our camera that's malfunctioning a little bit. And it gets hotter, and as it does, it just freezes on at whatever color it is. And so this is a green pixel. So what it is, it's just lit up at 100% green. Even though there isn't anything there to photograph, it got hot and malfunctioned. And so what you do when you take new darks and new flats is you basically just recognize, hey, uh, that pixel's no longer any good. And because there are millions and millions of pixels, you don't normally see one pixel at a time. But boy, when one gets hot, now you can see it. And so what you do when you take dark calibration frames is you keep the cover on the telescope and you take pictures of the pixels that are lit up, even though the telescope is covered with its lens cap. So the whole field of view is dark, except for the hot pixels. And then the software is smart enough. Now get this. The software is smarter, smart enough to say, ah, I'm never going to look at that pixel again. And it's kind of like that old Sergeant Schultz on Hogan's Heroes. I see nothing. I see nothing. And it pretends like the hot pixel is not there. And it just ignores all the reports from that pixel. And then the problem is, the next time you use your telescope and your camera, a couple of other pixels get hot and, and malfunction. So one at a time, you uh, do away with these, with those dark calibration frames. And we have a lot fewer, but here's one up here. And here's one here, sadly. So anyway, there's the galaxy. Let's just don't pay any attention to the pixels that are hot. <laughs> and look at the beautiful edge on galaxy. You can see a dust lane here, a little black dust lane there. Okay, we'll take one more picture of this since we're up to eight minutes now. And then once that picture snaps, and this little, we'll take the sequencer and we'll go back to the next target. Yes. We are applying darks now. 
uh, you can see subtract darks here. We, we are applying them. Now maybe it's from my old catalog and these aren't from the most recent catalog of darks. Let's check that when we, when we go back next time. Okay, our next object, oh wait, we gotta get rid of this out of our working and put it in our observe, 5746. 57, 5746, observed, 5746, 5746, deleted from the working, save, and now our next target is going to be 5846, NGC 5846. So we're going to go here and look for 5846. Right here it is. And we're going to center on it. And we're going to salute to it. We're going to open up info. We're going to Make a new title for it. 5846. And this is an elliptical galaxy. An elliptical galaxy. Um, where is that? Also in, in Virgo. Okay, an elliptical galaxy. And we're going to go... 5846 NGC 5846 5846 Now let's uh, plate solve. I don't think that there's any sense because I can already see it right here. So let's don't fool with plate solving. And let's just start our sequence to image. Don Kornstrom, AZ, check the quality of the YouTube feed. It likes set quality low. Sometimes that will cure the fuzziness if that's an issue. Azrae, how do you check the quality? Okay, so there Don's told you, I think. Um, so we're using right now, we're imaging at um, 20 seconds with a gain of 100. Let's look and see what dark we're applying here. 20 seconds, gain of 100, shot on, ooh, 2021, look at that. This is not the most recent. Two thousand twenty-two. wonder why it didn't pick up the most recent. One, there goes a little satellite across. Um, 20 seconds at 100 on 7.6. So let's apply that dark. Yeah, that got rid of those hot pixels. So Palpatech, thanks for asking if we were applying that. We were applying darks, but it was an old dark calibration frame. For some reason, uh, SharpCap had not sorted out using a new one. I wonder if our flat is the same. 222, 112. It is. That's not the most recent flat. Wow. So how can we find the most recent flat? July, July 5th. Master flat. How about that? So now we've got the most recent flat and the most recent dark applied. Thanks to our good friend Papa Tech that asked us about this. Touch the screen. This is, Don is explaining how to check the quality. Uh, Don says, touch the screen, the gear in the upper right. Um, then go to advance at the bottom and it should pop up with the playback quality. How thick is the user manual for this software? Seems so complicated for any new astronomers. <laughs> yeah. Actually, 
There is a pretty good tutorial on this. Uh, Dave, can you find Apophis with this telescope? I think he was a character in uh, Stargate. And I tell you that flying saucer we found a while ago, he might have been on there. Dawn, after tapping on quality, I should have said. You guys, thanks for all your help. We've got about 25 on the live stream. If you haven't already logged in to tell, to tell where you're from, please let us know where you're observing from. That would be great. Uh, now, NGC 58. This is a, a spiral galaxy. Let's do a, a color balance here and go back to the Put the blacks right on that crest and then bring in our mids. Boy, I can see the, um, it's an elliptical, I'm sorry. See that elliptical shape there? What that's basically telling you is it's not spiral. An elliptical galaxy, you know, a good way to remember what an elliptical galaxy is, is it's anything that's not spiral. <laughs> elliptical galaxies are typically just globs um, and they are spinning. Uh, so they're a little bit different than a globular cluster, which is traveling through space in a, you know, in an arc around a galaxy. But this elliptical galaxy is like our Milky Way, but it didn't end up squashing out flat. So that's a good way to think of it. An elliptical galaxy is like the Milky Way, except it didn't flatten. So there you see it. That's 100% of our... 100% of our camera. Well, I like the fact, now you notice we're not seeing that hot green pixel over here. And we're not seeing the hot green pixel here because the new dark has told SharpCap not to pay attention to it. Now what we are seeing here is a satellite trail that got captured. And I don't know what that is. Um, so this is NGC 5846, an elliptical galaxy. We'll go ahead here and do a new observation of this. We'll say NGC 5846 appeared like a glob in the middle of our frame. And I might add a tiny glob. Let's see what size this is. Only 4.3. Uh, arc minutes of angle. Only 4.3 arc minutes of angle. Um, let's see what Stephen James Amiro says about this NGC 5846. It's a small but relatively conspicuous elliptical galaxy near fourth magnitude uh, 110 Virginis. It is like a condensed fuzzy star. Yeah, that's a pretty good description. It is best seen at moderate magnification. Under dark sky, which we don't have with the moon being so bright, it's um, two arc minutes wide in his four-inch scope. It's relatively obvious fuzzy patch that brightens to a core. Yeah. Uh, if you go at 72 power in his four-inch scope, the galaxies are round condensation with a star-like nucleus. Yep, that's what it looks like. A round condensation with a star-like nucleus. Large telescopes should clearly show the highly condensed 13.5 magnitude star-like galaxy NGC 5846A. Oh, 40, 40 minutes south. The 11th magnitude 5850 can also be seen 10 minutes to the southeast. So 5846 and 5850. Hmm. Let's get rid of this and go back. Huh. Boy, look at all the satellite trails. Look at this satellite trail. It's a bright one. So there's our elliptical galaxy. We'll use digital zoom to come in on it. 
you can see how that this outer portion sort of looks like condensation on the lens. And then with a star-like core, that's at 175 degrees optical. See what you guys are saying here. Um, watching from Georgia, Mike says, why don't you take a new dark and flat each time you observe? Mike, that's a good question. It's really just because I like to come out and, and be ready in five minutes or so. You know, I just, with the observatory that we have, we're so blessed. Uh, we just can start observing in five minutes. And uh, it really is just, that's, that's a shot of the observatory with the roof rolled off. It's so quick that it's a spoiler. Uh, that's the only reason why. And taking those darks and flats, it just takes a few minutes to do that. Uh, Don, YW, it's annoying that I have it set for YouTube to stream high quality, but often resets down to 144p. Flatwater 5, hit the like button. That's so nice of you, Flatwater 5. Papa Tech, hope you can come back later on in the night when your sky is clear and uh, do some observing there in Florida. So again, this is NGC 5846, Dane, I can only click it once. Um, Don understands. All right, so let's just click a quick snapshot of this and we'll go over here to 5846 and we'll show that it has been observed. We'll go here to Live Sky and look for 5846 and we'll delete it from our working list and save that working list. And back here in SharpCap Pro, let's stop the live stacking and uh, get ready for the next target. And we're making pretty good headway. Uh, you can see that we've now observed three objects on the Herschel 400 list. So let's go to 5897. 5897. So go over here in uh, our planetarium software, Starry Night Pro, and here's 5897. And we'll slew to it and center on it in our planetarium software. We'll open up an info panel about it. This is a globular cluster, fairly low in the sky, 5897, a globular cluster, cluster, a globular cluster in the constellation Libra. We're in the constellation Libra now. In the constellation Libra. This is 5897. 5897. 5897. I think we're pretty well probably spot on because we didn't do too big of a slew to get here. But we'll let our camera look. Sorry, I may have asked this last time, but forgot. What's column C on your Excel sheet again? Well, we weren't really using column C much last time, so don't feel bad. We're 0 .19, 0 0.19 degrees off, so 19 hundredths of a degree off. So we'll do that correction. Um, we, we just started making the spreadsheet last time. I don't know if that's doing any good for us to use a spreadsheet, but... I'm using uh, one column to keep track of the page number in the Steve O'Meara book. 
and then I'm using a third column, or I'll see a second column to show it's observed, and the third column to show the page number in the Stephen James O'Meara book. Wow, look, we can see it right here in the middle. How about that? So let's start our live stacking. You'll recall that live stacking is the process of taking each 20 second exposure and averaging it together with the next. And as we average these exposures, the quality gets better and better. That's one of the kind of hallmarks of electronically assisted astronomy. You're stacking these real time while you're observing at the image, you know, in the sky. So you can see right now, there's that globular cluster. Let's back off just a little bit so we can see that in the context of the night sky. There it is. So we're going to do a color matching here. Do a little color balancing. Bring our mids here and bring our blacks up and establish the new black point. This is the new black threshold. Yeah, look at that globular cluster right there in the middle. See how that uh, really thick pattern of stars right there. It kind of looks like a snowball, a loose snowball of stars, doesn't it? Now that's at 100%. The reds are really up high here. Let's do another color balance. See if we can tune out those reds. There just are a lot of oranges in this image, aren't there? A lot of orange stars. Mm. Azrae, yes, Don Mine resets also. Dane, insert a new row at the top with labels. Insert a new column A with the date it was observed. That way you can use Excel to filter to the date you want to see. Well, that would be very critical, Dane, if we were actually using the Excel sheet to keep track of our observations, but we aren't. Um, the Excel sheet is just kind of a scratch sheet so that we can set a group of, of uh, objects that we want to observe tonight, but we won't use it after tonight. The real um, observation data happens in our planetarium software. And uh, we'll just show you here. Uh, with uh, our 11, well, let's do this again here. With our 11 inch Rasa, we could, let's go ahead and put the, um, we could uh, resolve this globular cluster remarkably well at 100% of our ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro cameras resolution. You're wondering what I'm doing there. That's a bug in our uh, camera's resolution we were able to see, how many stars would you estimate we're looking at here? How many stars would that be? Probably 50 brighter ones, and then what? Another 100? Another 100 dim ones, would you say? Somebody take a guess. How many, how many stars are we resolving there? We're exposing 20 seconds per frame. These are 20 second time exposures and the mount is keeping the telescope on the sky as it glides across east to west. I should say the apparent motion of the sky east to west because the earth is turning. So the mount is keeping the telescope glued to the same spot in the nighttime sky and then we're exposing repetitively 20 second frames. This is three minutes of exposure so far. Thank you, Don, for asking that question. So I'm going to guess, uh, you guys let us know how many do you think that you see. I'm going to guess we're able to see around 
50 brighter stars, and man, over 100 fainter stars, I would estimate, in this cluster. 5897. That's beautiful. Let's see what uh, Steve Omira says about 5897. Need to check off the 5746. 5897. He says it's an unusually loose globular cluster. And see, I would agree. That's why we're resolving all these stars. Among the dim and unassuming stars of Libra, it can be seen on a clear, moonless night. Well, with the magic of electronically assisted astronomy, we're seeing this on a very moonlit night, 90% moon, away from city lights, and we are in the city lights of Louisville, Kentucky, as a large amorphous glow, nearly one-third the apparent size of Omega Centauri. Wow! That's huge, isn't it? From a dark sky site, it's visible in 7 by 50 binoculars. Even the smallest telescope will show its beautiful but dim cometary glow. He calls NGC 5897 the ghost globular. I like that, because it resembles a ghost image of the globular M55 in Sagittarius. He says it looks like a perfect comet without a tail in his 4-inch scope. It doesn't look like a comet in ours, does it? You can clearly see this is not a comet. With averted vision, a central pip swims in and out of view. What's a pip? Also, a multitude of phantom stars float across the cluster's periphery. Okay, I guess so. Um, it says it is almost an oblate disk. <laughs> Appears buffed and featureless as if its stars had been scrubbed away with bleach. But with a little concentration, the glow resolves into a patchwork of glittering hazes that lacks a strong central condensation. Boy, he just really describes these well. The cluster's brightest stars shine at magnitude 13.3. They appear to form slight needles of light that border minute holes at the core. He's right. There are some holes in that core. Isn't that something? You know, we can just learn something by reading Steve O'Meara's descriptions of things, and it almost lets us see more. So Stephen James O'Meara, I was raised near the town of Seymour, Indiana, and you remind me of that town because you let us see more. I'm going to brighten up these mids a bit. Oh, my goodness, look. Look at how many stars we're seeing now. That's just with just five minutes of uh, integration. Does 2 by 2 bin help with EAA? That's a very good question, Azrae. 2 by 2 binning does help with fainter objects. However, you are giving up, what, half of your, more than half. Because two by two is a is a squared figure, so you're giving up some of your resolution. So for my purposes, since we can stack, I don't notice that two by two is really helping much compared to stacking with full resolution. <clears throat> Rock. Oh, so you guys must have been wondering what camera we're using. It is a twenty six hundred. Dane, is it wrong to assume that a globular cluster has a massive black hole at the center? I don't think globular clusters usually do. This is a, a bunch of stars that are traveling together at, you know, fairly, not light speed, but I mean fairly nice clip. Um, so there's no black hole in the middle. Now, galaxies that spin around quickly, they develop a black hole. But this is not, uh, you know, spinning like a disk. Instead, it's these stars are traveling together, orbiting a disk. 
Dawn. That was cheesy. <coughs> Dawn must have cracked a joke. There goes a satellite um, photo bombing our picture, huh? Look how it was revolving. And we caught every other reflection of whatever it's reflecting. Anyway, I'm convinced this is a beautiful globular cluster. Look at that. It's just gorgeous. Let's save a picture of this at seven minutes. And as soon as that saves, we're going to click our sequencer back to our next target. This is uh, 5897. 5897. Observed. 5897. Removed from our working list. Save. And um, now we're going to go back here to our little scratch spreadsheet. 5322. All I use that for is just to find it over here. 5322 is right there. We'll open up an info pane. It's a bit of a pain, isn't it? 5322. We'll uh, center on 5322. And then we'll slew there. There you can see the scope moving. Jen, thanks for that encouragement. It really is beautiful, isn't it? Don, no you with Seymour. Oh, I was being cheesy. Yeah, well, you know, it was our tribute to Stephen James O'Meara. Ghost Boat. What a great avatar name. Ghost Boat. It has some interesting depth. It really does. Azrae, very nice. Well, Azrae, thanks for that encouragement. Sometimes I feel like an absolute beginner, and you guys are kind enough to encourage so you can see where the scope is pointing here now. Uh, the camera view of the scope is looking over the top of the scope as if to view north. So that tells you that the scope's looking a little bit to the northwest, about halfway up the sky. So you can kind of use the live view there to see uh, what part of the sky we're viewing. And uh, let's back off a little bit. Look, we're, we're a little bit ahead of the handle of the Big Dipper. Put some more constellations up here so you can see here's the Little Dipper, and you can see here's the Big Dipper part of Ursa Major. This is the whole bear. You can see if we back off here, are the bear's legs, there's the bear's head. Ursa Major is part of the big bear. Okay, so now we're gonna zoom in here. And NGC 5322 is our next target. So let's go down here and say NGC 5322. And it's an elliptical galaxy. An elliptical galaxy. And... Ursa Major. And Ursa Major. And we're going to change the name here in Sharp Cap because that's where NGC 5322, that's where our pictures get their names, is by that name in Sharp Cap. So now we're going to go back to imaging, which is the 20-second frames, 20-second subframes. Notice how when it first starts, it uh, sees the previous object, and then SharpCap cleans the deck, clears the deck, and clears out that last object. Excuse me, it is getting late, isn't it? Uh, midnight now here, but we're about halfway through. Um, interesting depth, very nice. We have about 28 people in the live stream. You guys are adventurous to join us so late. Um, let's go back out to full frame. 
and let's do a color balance here. The reason why we have to color balance a lot more, uh, we have to color balance a lot more on a moonlit night, because every time we change positions closer or farther away from the moon, uh, the color balance changes. Dane, interesting to see how much we see of NGC 5322 with how much moonlight is out. As Ray, we all learn together, or as Red Green would say, we're all in this together, I'm pulling for you. <laughs> okay. Let's do a um, plate solve, just to make sure. I think I see it down there at the bottom of the frame, don't you? I bet this is our elliptical galaxy. So what should happen now is there'll be a correction of about, we'll see how much it corrects here, 0.67 degrees. And we're going to clear the live stack. Should have played solved while we were still in the three second exposures, huh? 4 p.m. there in New Zealand. Stu, good to have you here. Uh, so we're waiting for a new, there we go. Now it's right in the middle, you see. Now look at all this um, noise in the picture. That's all the moonlight, you know, it wasn't quite steady, wasn't it? Let's just stop stacking for a minute and do this right. See all the, we were still getting some settling in of our mount. Now let's start our live stacking again. And you see that elliptical right in the middle of the, of the frame? Again, remember an elliptical galaxy is, um, it's basically not, it doesn't look, excuse me, spiral from where we are. Smooth, featureless disk that range in appearance from a circular to cigar-shaped. Elliptical galaxies are denoted by the letter E. They're also given a number range from 0 to 7 based on their ellipticity. Well, now that's the first time I've ever heard of that before. An E0 galaxy looks like a circle. An E7 galaxy is very long and thin. So I wonder what this one is. Galaxy type E doesn't really give it that in our planetarium software. But right there it is in the middle. Now let's do a color balance. E3 or 4, Dane says. Thank you, Dane. 9 p.m. in Arizona, 4 p.m. in New Zealand. Isn't it weird the way time zones work? Let's zoom in on this. That's about 100%. Look how it has a little companion star here. At least it looks that way from our vantage point. This could be a star that's in our foreground, and it's just a visual companion star. That's what I suspect. I kind of suspect that that star is just a visual. Let's see what Stephen James O'Meara says about this. 5322. It says it's a moderately small but very condensed elliptical galaxy. Um, it's a good target for small telescope users. Only a three minute wide oval glow in a four inch scope, oriented east to west, and gradually, suddenly becomes much brighter towards the center to a very star like nucleus. Yeah. As so much power, the galaxy is an extremely bright and sharp stellar core of 1.5 minutes wide, condensed inner lens that's surrounded by an elliptical halo, which averted vision appears somewhat irregular and illusion due to superimposed faint stars. See, that's it. It's a superimposed faint star that's just in the foreground. Let's go back over to our um, planetarium software. 
And let's look at this in our planetarium software. Hmm. We're so tight in, we're not able to see that star that's a companion. Very interesting. NGC 5322. NGC 5322 looked irregular in our 11-inch scope partly because there's a visual pair star with it. Elliptical galaxy, smooth featureless disk. So there it is, 5322 with what looks to be a visual foreground star that's just off to the left of it, which tricks people sometimes into thinking that it is oval in shape. like sunspots. Hmm, boy, it just won't, uh, it won't color balance anymore. Do you think that's because of the moonlight? Just going to ignore the red. Man. That's weird, isn't it? Which peak? And how far to bring over the Miz, right? There it has a definite greenish tinge. Let's see. Still some sun in Oregon at 9 p.m. My dad used to watch Red Green. He's pretty funny. I don't think I've ever seen that. Ghost boat. Descriptive writer. Great resource, right? Asray, 9 p.m., 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Yikes, Asray. Yes, Don, I wish he was still on. Red Green. I don't think I've seen that. I'm having trouble getting a good... A good color balance. You think that's because we're too close to the moon? Let's go back over here in our planetarium software and let's see where we are in relation to the moon. Donde esta la luna? Be over there somewhere. Let's just go like this for a minute. We'll say moon. No, that's pretty far away. Hmm. Indeed, pretty far away. So I guess this is just a uh, Typical stuff, the city lights and sure is ugly color balancing, isn't it? Boy, 
why no matter what we do, this is horrible. It's as good as we're going to get it tonight, I'm afraid, gang. Maybe if we manually stick the red over there. There we go. A little bit better. Let's bring that green down as well. There, it's a little better, isn't it? Okay, let's save that at 6 minutes, 40 seconds. NGC 5322. Hubble did a shot of NGC 5322 in 2018, and yours doesn't look far off from what they have on Wiki. Wow, Dane, we'll have to go look at that. Stu, supposedly the JWST will be visible to small telescopes. Just need the software to find it and the knowledge of when it's in the right place to be reflective. That's awesome. We uh, observed the JWST when it was on its way out to its location, but I don't think, I don't remember us trying to observe the JWST since it's been out there at a million miles away. Fifty three twenty two Hubble NGC fifty three twenty two. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wow. Look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Just looks like something straight out of, I don't know, an illustration from the Bible or something. It's so beautiful. It's so bright and crystal. Just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see the bright star at the bottom of it? Yeah, good observation, Dane. Wow, look at all these other galaxies. Wow. The Hubble just rocks, doesn't it? Um, 5322. There it is. Let's delete that and save. Let's go out to 53.22 here. NGC 53.22 and add it to observed. All right. Let's go back now to our, take one last picture of this at eight minutes. Doug, what camera gain do you use? Uh, we use 300 during uh, targeting and then drop it to 100 for the actual shots. Um, this was Azrae asking that. All right, let's go to next target. So now, in other words, right now we're switching it to three second time exposures at 400 gain. I said 300, didn't I? But it's 400 gain in our sequencer. And now we'll go over here. We did 5322. Let's, let's go to NGC 5474. NGC 5474. And we'll center on that and show the info pane about it. And we'll also slew to it. 
Not much movement there. As Ray, we use 100 gain because of um, the fact that there is a little shelf there. If you look at a chart of the ASI 2600 MC Pro camera, there's a little shelf there where you see the most dynamic range that the camera does, 14 stops at, at gain of 100. So it's actually the most efficient gain. Wow. So this was off quite a bit. wonder why. Hmm. Hmm. So we're going to NGC 5474. And this is a spiral galaxy in Ursa Major. So there you see where we are in Ursa Major, right above the tip of the handle. Let's uh, change this name to NGC 5474 and go to our live stacking sequence. Dane says, this one is so pretty. How do you know these, Dane? That's crazy. NGC 5474. Once this says finish now in our sequencer, we can always get rid of these. The sequencing is just a block of commands that you've uh, told SharpCap to do together. And it really just takes, you know, a good solid night of experimentation to see what sequence you would like to do each time. Oh, so Dane is Googling them as I say them. <laughs> Dane, I thought you had all these memorized. I was going to say, wow, that's fantastic. Did we? Um, yes, we did. Uh, plate solve. I'm not seeing anything there. Let's color balance this. Hard to get a good color balance on. Must be on moon, moonlit nights. Ah, Azray has the same setup, but just does astrophotography. I see. So, Azray's also got a Rasa eleven and uh, ASI 2600 MC Pro. What are we supposed to be looking at here? I don't see the target. This is supposed to be a spiral galaxy. Let's go up here. Let's change this to um, under view. Let's under tools, let's say Deep sky image annotation. Well, there it is. It's supposed to be right in the middle. 5322. Oh, wait, we're looking at 5474, aren't we? Let's get this figured out. Let's go back to next target. Let's go here and slew to 5474 again. I don't think it moved very much. Now let's plate solve. Hmm. Take these deep sky um, image annotation off while it's plate solving. Yeah. Hmm. 
5474. Okay. There's a satellite trail right down the middle, huh? Boy, I still don't see a spiral galaxy. We'll see if it does another correction here. We're still imaging at three second frames. 0 0.11 degrees. Yeah, that's a bit. Um, Dane, bottom left. You could have been right, Dane. Mm, Jen, Stu or Doug. So in the southern hemisphere, is everything above look backwards compared to the northern? Yes. Sure does, Dane. You just have a different field of view, right? That's why a lot of astronomers really just say there really is no right side up because right side up is so relative to where you're standing on the Earth that it's kind of a lost bearing to say right side up, upside down, you know. Okay, that should be spot on now, supposedly. So let's start imaging. NGC 5474. Never observed this before. Four seventy four. Do a color balance. Man. Why aren't we getting any? Why is this balance so mixed up? Do you use any filters in sharp cap live settings? No, we don't. They're down here, aren't they? And there's this enhancement. Effects that you can use in enhancement like noise reduction, radius, no, noise reduction, sharpening like the unsharp mask, the Weiner deconvolution. I don't use any of those. We do have a um, Celestron light pollution filter that we just keep on the scope at all times. So that's just there because we're on the outskirts of Louisville and Bortle 6. This is a pretty mixed up sky to me. Why are we not seeing? Let's do this uh, auto stretch. And then a color balance. Guess that could be right. Boy, what a mess, huh? This is so odd. Still not seeing it. You think we're in the wrong part of the sky? Yeah, this is not the right part of the sky. Let's go back to next target. Let's try this one more time. NGC 5474. Slew to NGC 5474. No scope movement, huh? So it thinks it's already pointing at it, 
let's center on it. It's already centered there. Wow, look at M101 here. Should be in the same frame. And it's not. What has happened? Let this 20 second exposure come in. Maybe we're pointed directly at the moon. Where is the moon now? No, the moon wouldn't be here. It sure looks like it is, though, doesn't it? There we go. Now we're cooking. Okay, so here's M101, and there is the beginnings of NGC 5474. Boy, it took us a while to get this light arranged, didn't it? <clears throat> I think this just has to be moonlight. Let's zoom in. Of course, this is M101 here. That's a grand, grand design galaxy. This spiral is not going to be as pretty. And look at all that noise. Um, try to get some of that out. Yeah, there you go. But boy, if you do, you're beginning to really lose some of the nature of the galaxy, too. Put it right there where we would normally put it to make the whole thing black. It's just turning the galaxy too black. You're not seeing any definition at all. This is with 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Let's back out a little. Let's see how Stephen, Stephen James O'Meara describes this because that's not looking like a typical spiral 5474. Is a moderately small and dim galaxy near M101 a magnificent open face spiral galaxy? Uh, its faint and diffused round patch of uniform light only three minutes, three arc minutes wide. In small telescopes, higher powers only diffuse the light to near invisibility. 
It is best seen under a dark sky at low power. We don't have a dark sky. Larger telescopes make it appear more obvious, slightly more concentrated, but no more defined. Six thirty one. Um, Azray, some of them help. Azray, our mutual friend Tiago has good suggestions on his channel. Ghost mode, does the software need restarting? Not sure if it ever gets buggy. Not usually. We don't usually have to restart uh, sharp cap. Azray, try to increase the exposure to 45 seconds. That might help us, but you can see it's not looking bad. Let's at least go to 30 seconds because I have I have flats shot at 30 seconds. All good things take time, Dane says. Hubble took a picture in 2014 saying, a dwarf galaxy ravaged by grand design referencing M101. So there you go. That could be part of what we're seeing is the M101 has robbed parts of this galaxy, leaving only this third visible. I like that, Dane. Azray, moonlight does not help. That's why I use dual band filters. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have a moonlight filter on, uh, but at the same time with EAA, you can usually minimize a lot of the damage from moonlight just by all of the stacked exposures. There, that wasn't bad. Right there. There we go. Look at M101 down there in the lower right now. It's beautiful, isn't it? M101. And then look at the way, as Dane said, M101 has ravaged this galaxy. Five minutes of exposure. Boy, you get it too, you get that background too dark and you're suddenly degrading the quality of your image. That's actually not bad. Let's take that picture at six minutes. Oh, let me move this over one more time. There we go. That's not bad, is it? And we're going to say M101 is the showpiece in this field of view. But NGC 5474 holds its own. It's been um, ravaged by a close encounter 
with M101 Okay, here we go. Save this picture one more time. Looking good, Azray says. Uh, Azray, the L Pro also will help our UHC filter. Dane, it's a picture of an older and a younger sister in one. You're right. Azray, try lower green. There may be. Something like that. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, one more time. Save exactly as seen. M101 looks good, Azray says. Don says, wow, great photo. Uh, Flatwater 5, the fireworks galaxy. I think M101 is called the fireworks galaxy. That's a good point, Flatwater 5. Don, I've personally seen this galaxy. Flatwater 5, wow. Dane, right there. All right, very kind. All right, here we go. Back to um, next target mode. And over here, we'll say observed. This is 5474. 5474. And we'll remove it from here and save. And now we're back to our scratch sheet. 5473, it's bound to be close. Four seventy three. Let's slew there. Yeah, very close. No discernible scope movement. Go to fifty four seventy three. And are we still in Ursa Major? Yes. So where was seventy four? Either way. 5473 is very close. I wonder if we should play it solve. Just to make sure nothing's gone awry, because I sure don't see it there. 5473 is discovered by William Herschel on April 14, 1789. Flatwater, NGC 6946. We only have 30 minutes left. Um, Azray M101 and fireworks are not one and the same. I see. Done. Well, I'm tired. Going to head out. Thanks for the live, Doug. Don, thanks for joining us. Okay, so we did correct by five hundredths of a degree. Not much of a correction, huh? 5473. 
Now we'll start our sequencer. Four seventy three. Still have thirty two, thirty two on the live stream. If you have not yet uh, told us where you're from, please, please let us know. Yes, Dane, it's uh, black during the first 20-second frame because it doesn't have a frame yet to, you know, register. So always during that first 20 seconds, it's going to look black. Is that still M101 down there in the lower left? Deep sky annotation. Yeah, 5473 is supposed to be right there in the middle. So it might be that. Is it elliptical? 5473. It is elliptical. So that's it right there. The little circle is just a little bit off. It's right here. Right there. Not much there, is there? In a rasa. Oh, did we already look at this tonight? We did. Um, tiny elliptical, teeny. Barely like a um, star with condensation. 5473. 5473, yeah. 50. I wonder how we got back on this if we if we've already observed it. 5473. Page two oh seven. Page two oh seven. Fifty four seventy three. Hmm. Well, it looks a lot like what we saw all ago, but maybe it's just a very close match to what we saw a while ago because this was not remember this little star here was not on that side so it just must be almost an identical match for what we saw oh sorry 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 black screen sorry Scott yeah that was the title screen oh several of you have identified where you're Stu, do you have a, a website where we can go to look at all these photos? You know, I do have an Astro Bin uh, site, but I just don't use it that much. I'll have to post these, won't I? Scott's north of Atlanta, waiting for clear skies. Cindy's in southern Illinois. Tarva in Houston. Hector in Monterrey. Monterrey. Uh, John in Berea. Welcome to all of you all. Uh, Dane, maybe I need to refresh. I'm still only seeing a black screen. Yeah, I apologize. That was the title screen. Uh, John and Sebastian, Flatwater in Dallas, Scott, let's see, Dane, yep, thanks, Dane. Hector, thank you. Jen, where are you? <laughs> All right, back on track, Jen says. Flatwater 5, I'm in Skinwalker Ranch waiting for my interstellar ride. Flatwater, you are wild. Okay, so there you see that um, elliptical. 
It looks very much like the elliptical we saw a while ago with the companion star that might have been in the foreground, but that companion star was in a different place. So I think this must be a different, a different one. Uh, we could make out a seeming companion star which might be in the foreground. This is with three minutes. Let's go over here to um, Starry Night Pro and let's zoom in. Yeah, see that star is 320 light years and NGC 5473 is its distance is not noted I don't think they're related at all so I think that star that we're seeing is just the foreground in our path and you see 5473 NGC that star now that star also might be with the galaxy hmm, either way it's beautiful isn't it 5473 Tough to, tough to know, but I think these stars are just in our foreground. Hello from North Carolina, Deborah. Glad to have you here, Deborah. Ah, uh, yeah. Azray in Arizona. Flower, that's what I'm going to name my next dog. Cygnus? Got it. Dignified name. Ursa Major is no big deal. <laughs> All right, let's capture this. Um, and 5473. And let's go back to the next target. 1244. So we've made good progress tonight. Um, we already did all this. 5473. Let's go to 5631. NGC 56. NGC 5631. Center on it. Salute to it. Show the info. It's a Spiral Galaxy in Ursa Major. So 5631. 5631, a Spiral Galaxy in Ursa Major. Boy, there's not that much there, is there? The picture in our planetarium software is just lost. Just lost. 5631. Well, it's certainly, uh, we've certainly covered more ground tonight. 
according to Ursa Minor, make it so, number one. Tom Kessler, what's up? Uh, Dane, NGC5631, no entry on wiki. Huh. Must be pretty nondescript. Yeah, look at the description. Here's the description in Starry Night Pro. NGC5631, <laughs> that's all it says. <laughs> okay, so we were just three hundredths of a degree off. So as soon as it settles, we'll be able to start imaging. Oh, good. Azrae is going to look for our astro bin. Tommy, any supernova going up? We do try to watch for, you know, notable supernova. Boy, we must be looking at the moon, you think? Look how bright this is. Man. Oh, there we go. Anybody see a um, spiral galaxy in there? There's a little splotch right here. Let's go into 100% to 100%. Man, you think it's one of these? I think it's that. It's just a tiny, tiny splotch, isn't it? Fifty, fifty-six, thirty-one. I didn't change this name here. In the old days, we wouldn't have been able to change it, but now with this current version of SharpCap, you can. To 631. It's a small dim galaxy four degrees northeast of M101. You will need to make careful star hop to it, then look for a small fuzzy star at its location. A dark sky moderate modification is required to see it at all. 5631. Let's use um, yeah, right there it is. It's that boy. Isn't it nice to have um, this deep sky annotation? Scott says, "What's your camera scope setup info?" It's a Rasa eleven on board a an Ioptron CEM seventy G mount. Um, it's using uh, ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro, and you found that in the description. Thanks, Scott. Google says it's lenticular, as Ray says. John Grage, Doug, send some of your weather down here. I want to open up. Sneak attack storms here in Florida tonight. Rats. John, sorry to hear that. All right, let's uh, zoom in some more on this. My goodness, how would we ever have known that? That's at 300%, and that's it. What's the angular? Two arc minutes, it's official. That's the smallest thing I've ever looked at. Um, this is officially the smallest target we've ever tried to observe 
two arc minutes of angle, it looks like a fuzzy star, but is a lenticular galaxy. Hmm. NGC 5631. NGC 5631. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's what we're seeing. Just a fuzzy star. Right there. That's it, gang. Not much at four minutes of uh, integration. We'd have to go a little bit longer. It looks like the beginning of it may be looking a little bit like a um, globular cluster, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's not. It's a lenticular galaxy. 5631. All right. Uh, eight minutes to go. Let's try one more. NGC 6144. NGC... 6144, NGC 6144, there we go, slew to it, globular cluster, and it's in Scorpius, NGC 6144. G1, G6, 6144, a globular cluster in, where do we say it was? Scorpius. Hmm. All right. Oh, look, the moon's right there. Now we can see some moonlight, can't we? I don't know if we'll see this or not. 6144. Let's try it. Just because we like to be daring with the moon, right? Um, let's see how bright this is. Hmm. Niagara Falls, Canada. Scott, good to have you here. Scott Johnson, you may have to show some of the noise. Uh, yep, you're right. Tommy, look at Beetlejuice. Flower to Five, can we send anyone some Texas heat? Anybody, anyone? P. Lark, hello, good evening. Good to have you here, P. Lark. Flower to Five, Lori Lightfoot. Ghost Boat, I read it's circumpolar. Tarvalas, that's a good idea. Flatmates, Tommy, Flatwater Five. Dane, how far away is it? Good question. Uh, Flatwater, sorry. Longer focal length would show more of it. Yep, I bet you're right. Um, 103 degrees for Tarva. Triple digits all week for Flatwater. Wow. Can you look at Beetlejuice? We can try, Tommy. Um, boy, this is sure bright, isn't it? I mean, this is hugely bright. <laughs> sixty one forty four 
This will be our last image of the night, 1256. Let's see how much of the moonlight is destroying this globular cluster. Waiting for the first frame to pop in. There it is. What a destructive force the moon is. Look at that. Nothing there. All right, so let's don't even claim that we looked at this. I don't think Beetlejuice is up, is it? Yeah, it's not above the horizon. It's a winter constellation, sorry. Um, yeah, 5631 is just too close to the moon tonight. Completely lost in moonlight. Oh, Flatwater 5, that's so nice. Flatwater 5 did a $10 uh, thank you uh, super chat deal. Thank you so much, Flatwater 5. Next stream, we do one stream a week on a clear night. We try to hit a weekend if we can, so look for it to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, this coming weekend. Scott, cool stream, any idea, nice setup. People like, don't forget to hit the like button. Ghost was 6144 skirts the horizon. Yes, I'm afraid you're right. Boy, thank you all for being with us tonight. Um, it's just an honor to have you in all of these live streams. Um, honestly, we just feel like that you guys spoil us by coming and uh, spending this time with us. We, uh, we don't deserve you coming along. We're working on a very, very tough list, and yet you're right here, uh, you know, toughing it out in the Herschel 400. So thank you very much. Uh, let's go just one more spot to the Ring Nebula. And uh, we'll end on that one just so we can end on a good note. It's in Lyra. So let's um, stop the live stacking. Once again, thank you, Flatwater5. Very kind. Thank you for spending two hours with us, Doug. Dang, that's very kind of you. Ghostwell, there are a lot of fascinating sites. Thanks for sharing, Tommy. I joined your YouTube when that meteor shower was supposed to be happening. Yeah, a lot of people did, Tommy. Uh, Jen, I love to learn. Thank you so much. You're very kind, Azrae. It's always a pleasure to see you. It's, it's our pleasure to see you, Azrae. Um, we are so grateful you're here. You know, um, I think probably for all of us, it's a unique thing to have a sky that's uh, this beautiful. I, I, I guess we just owe this to the creator of the universe that makes all these objects for us to see, so we have to give him thanks. Um, we're so grateful that you chose to spend this night with us. Again, we're on the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky. It's a very moonlit night. 90% moon. Some people wouldn't even tackle it, but uh, you guys came here anyway, and for that, we're very thankful. Uh, we're going to switch. Here's the ring nebula. We're just going to end with this so that we can see something as we sign off. We'll just, um, we'll just do... Um,
just a few seconds of live stacking here and uh, we'll be back next weekend lord willing any clear night we can find and we'll be sure and send an email if you have signed up for the email list and you do that at uh, emeraldhillskies.com emeraldhillskies.com you can sign up for the email list you can also subscribe to the youtube channel and that also gives you a little bit of heads up in the YouTube channel. Um, we typically send out a post to the community uh, at least a day before when we're going to um, when we're going to live stream. We send out a post to the community, and then uh, we also send out to the mailing list as well, and. Again, this is the ring nebula. This is one of those uh, planetary nebulas that has blown out. <clears throat> and just to zoom in here, you can typically see the green of the inside, a red around the outside. And if everything goes well, typically you can even make out some of that little white dwarf star that's sending out this, um, jettisoning this material. Uh, it's a fascinating object. Ring Nebula never really disappoints. And it's a planetary nebula. Uh, just puffs out all that, all that uh, material off the outer edge of the star. And then when the white dwarf fires back up, it illuminates it all from the back. So you get a bit of backlighting going on. And these planetary nebulae are always fun too because you can start seeing the poles. If you look very closely, you can see red on each end of the ring. So that makes it a little bit more fun. Let's see. Um, my goodness, you guys are always so kind. Azra, always a pleasure. Simon, thanks, Doug. Cindy, thank you. Jen, we sure do. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Uh, thank you, Flatwater 5. Ghost boat. It really is endless wonders. Very thankful. Enjoyed it, Doug. Mind's Eye Observatory, John. Jen, those are like notes singing. John Adams, awesome stream. Had lots of fun. Thanks for sharing. It's very kind of you, John. Mike, wow. Uh, Flatwater 5, we, deserve, we prefer to call them white little people stars. Yeah. All right, so we'll call it tonight. Thanks again to each of you for being here. Thanks to God for making all these objects. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Emerald Hill Skies. And that's all she wrote for tonight.